My advice to David Miscavige. From one Davy to another, Davy, I'm going to give you some advice that could change your life and that could get you out of this hole. I know you're probably not going to take it because you're constrained by your delusional thinking. But I'm a nice guy, nicer than you, so I'm going to give you that advice anyway. And just to be clear about my Machiavellian motives, I'm also giving you this advice because if you do it, it's going to prove my genius. And I like my genius being proven on a world stage, so please do. So here's the deal. Here's what you need to do, David Miscavige. You need to claim that you are the product of childhood trauma brought about by the Church of Scientology. You need to portray yourself as the number one victim of Scientology. Portray yourself as a true believer who got locked into it because of your evil dead dad. He's dead, so you can you can throw him under the bus, right? You were already ready to throw him under the bus when he was still alive, so is it really going to hurt to throw him under the bus a little more now that he's dead? So here's what you do. You say... Yeah, I went into Scientology as a kid, and I was blown away by L. Ron Hubbard and by being close to all this stuff. And I, you know, it became my religion, and I became a true believer. And through various traumatic episodes that shaped me um, through my childhood and, and my mean family of origin, and I found refuge in this cult... And, you know, everything just happened so fast. I got wrapped up in it. And and then you make up some bullshit thing of, of you know, you got to have an awakening story. You got to have what woke you up to the reality. And when you do that, then, number one, remember, you're... You're simultaneously asking for forgiveness from the world, but at the same time portraying yourself as the number one victim. See the genius? Right? Because now you get to throw your dad under the bus. You get to throw Scientology under the bus. You get to throw everybody that ever pissed you off in Scientology under the bus by name. And you get to come off as a guy who is struggling with a massive crisis of identity. Now, one of the first things that you're going to need to do is get psychiatric help. Okay, I know, I know that's going to rub you the wrong way because going to psychiatrists is really something that you have been indoctrinated to think is the worst thing you can do. But from a PR standpoint, Davey, that's what you want to do. You want to go to a psychiatrist and you want the psychiatrist to be able to back you up on your trauma story and how you started clinging on to this cult because you were a traumatized little boy. You're very vulnerable. And the cult gave you a sense of identity, a sense of belonging, a sense of victory and success and it was so good for you that you even ended up running the damn thing i mean 
And then you need to focus on that you you were a true believer. <coughs> Excuse me. You need to plead a little Stockholm Syndrome thing. And in the most Machiavellian of twists, you're going to get a psych to back up your story. Can't be hard. Can't be hard to find one psych out there that's willing to sell their soul. So, you're going to claim you were traumatized, you were brainwashed, you you were a true believer. Now we got to come up with what woke you up. What woke you up? So here's what you don't want to do. Don't blame the SPs as that they did anything wrong. Now you could credit the SPs. Here's what I would do. And this is slick, and this is like three-dimensional chess level shit here, so listen up. I want you to say that you sat down one weekend, and for the first time ever, you read your niece Jenna Miscavige's book. <clears throat> and when you read that, something in you broke. And you started crying. And you realized that she and you are very similar. It's a good story, Davy. It might work. And then, now she's not going to help you out on this. Okay, she's going to be skeptical. Okay, she's going to definitely be skeptical about this bullshit story, right? So I wouldn't reach out to her. I would let her hear about it and be skeptical. And then when you're interviewed about it, say, yeah, if I was her, I would never forgive me. She's right. See? See? Next level, dude. Next level. Okay? So... Your backing is going to be, number one, the psychs. Okay? You're going to have a psychiatrist. That's going to be your new best friend. He's going to be at every press conference. Everything. Okay? Then you're going to go and you are going to revamp Scientology as just some kind of self-help movement. You're going to voluntarily relinquish your tax-free status. And then you're going to downsize. You're going to take a few little self-helpy parts. And then also you're going to throw L. Ron Hubbard under the bus 75%. You're going to cherry pick some of his stuff and you're going to say, yeah, you know, I think this is good or that's good or da, 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 right? You're not going to throw 100% of it away because then it wouldn't be Scientology on any level anymore. And since you own all the rights to all his crap, might as well hold on to that, right? Um... And see, you could use the whole aspect of people wanting to forgive, people wanting a good redemption story. You could probably even get a movie deal out of it, right? It would be unprecedented. The cult leader exposes his own cult does a huge mea culpa tour around the world, it would make you look like a real stand-up guy. A real guy that, like, learned a lesson. A guy that, hey, I was traumatized. You know, I, I was a true believer. 
and then I read my niece's book and it broke me it broke me and I realized oh my god in one afternoon I realized what I had done and I broke down in tears and I did what I never thought I would ever do I went to a psychiatrist and I went in such fear because now the organization that I run is the people that can never know that I went to this psychiatrist and so now I'm in more fear of Scientology and OSA and all of that than than any SP out there I know what you're going through I'm going through it even more narcissists like to be victims they like to sign you up to their victim program if David Miscavige would go out there and do that there'd be a lot of people who would be prepared to believe him because a lot of people find it very hard to to keep punishing somebody that admits their guilt and begs for forgiveness I mean Christianity is kind of based on you get to ask for forgiveness no matter what you've done and even though David Miscavige runs a so-called church that desecrates the cross with a big X through it keep that in mind um, he is still in a predominantly Christian country with a lot of people who have a hard time hardening their hearts to a tearful confession. Davy, time to start taking some acting classes. And the only thing you gotta practice is tearful confession. That's your main way out of it. This is how you can preserve a reputation. You could show your face in public for the rest of your life. I mean, plenty of us aren't going to buy it ever. But, as you know, running the kind of scam that you've been running, like P.T. Barnum said, there's a sucker born every minute. And I think you could pull some of those suckers over onto your side of the line with the strategy that I just outlined. So, I know you're not going to do it. Because if I thought you were going to do it, I doubt I would make this video. But it is the only thing that would have any chance of working. Because there ain't going to be no golden age of tech and there is not going to be a renaissance of Scientology. At best, there's going to be limping along until the end when Scientology finally falls off of a cliff. And you got to sell those titanium records of L. Ron Hubbard's writings for scrap metal. <laughs>